Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm back again with Anime. Hello Anime, nice Hello. to have you back. And today we're going to talk about the transition from pre-clinical school to clinical school. So at Oxford and Cambridge, we have a very peculiar medical course, and I'd say one of the best medical courses out there because of the pre-clinical and clinical split. What is that? Well, in the first three years we do pure science practically, then in the last three years we are purely in hospitals and in clinical environments, learning how to become good clinical doctors. So anime, having done three years now, you'll be moving into clinical school this coming year. Given how my exams went, I might be doing an extra year of undergraduate studies, then going to clinical school, but today we'll focus on you. Um, so anyway, actually, first introduce yourself to the channel and my, my audience, and yes, tell them more. Hi, I'm Anime. I'm a third year medical student um, at Peterhouse. Um, I'm doing my part two in engineering, so I've taken the year out to do um, a bit of engineering along with Sen. A bit. Um, <laughs> Just a little bit, just a third of the degree, um, <laughs> uh, well, but what a third of the degree it is. Uh, I will be hopefully finishing my bachelor's and then I'll be going to clinical school at Sensor next year. Mm, fantastic. And you're at Peterhouse. Yes. Yes. And if you haven't checked out our other video on how oh, anime is an amazing and um, sort of to be noble laureate, uh. <laughs> um, do go and check out uh, the other videos in the description. We talk more about Peter House and also your yeah. career as a researcher, both here in Cambridge and Harvard, and I think where are you going next? And Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Oh wow! But today we'll talk about clinical school. Yeah. So let's talk about your outlook on clinical school and what you're looking forward to, what your sort of expectations are of clinical school, and how you think it'll be different to what you're used to so far, having been in like a typical intense Cambridge academic uh, degree. Oh, I am so looking forward to it. Um, one of the great things about the preclinical course is that after about three years of sort of scientific study, you are really ready to go start meeting some patients out in the field. Um, and obviously, you know, anyone who applies to Cambridge to do medicine like really wants to go see patients. So mm. I'm, 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 I'm really, really excited. And like, I'm really excited to go down to the clinical school. We have like a few tastes of it um, as part of um, our preparing for patients course. Mm. Um, I don't know whether you did the clinical supervisions this year. Um, which, what do you mean? The, oh yes, 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 I did. We went to Adam Brooks yeah. and had some patients. Oh, that was brilliant. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, that's part of a third year, a sort of new third year program by the Cambridge University Medical Education um, Society. Mm. Um, they take some of the third year students out and they basically let you go around the wards and they'll explain, you know, this particular case, you know, various cases on a particular medicine ward. So that was really useful and it was like really good to see like how are these sort of fourth and fifth year doctors working in sort of a in their environment. Ward. Yeah, and like, you know, what do they know? What competencies do they have? Mm -hmm. And it helps you sort of understand, you know, what is the jump that's going to be expected coming from preclinical to clinical medicine. So just to um, clarify, even though we're doing preclinical and we're saying it's pure, pure science, we still have the, like I said, the PFP strand. So in first year we have PFP A, yeah. where we just go to a GP. PFP B is in second year, where we go to the hospital. Yeah, hospital. Then PFP C is your sort of um, alternative medicine. Yeah. Place. So one's alternative med. You have to go visit over the summer holidays an alternative medicine placement, mm. and I think um, I don't know what you call it, a community care placement. Yes. Okay. So like a sort of cancer bereavement centers. Sort of yeah. Those community. Yeah. Like something not in the traditional like primary secondary care setting, but like mm. a care home. Then PFD was more about um, meeting a pregnant lady and continuous care. Yeah. The importance of that. So even though you are, you know, doing an intense science degree at Cambridge for the first three years, they still incorporate some patients in there to make sure you realise that you are still a medical student. Yeah. But now in fourth, fifth, sixth year, you'll be doing pure, pure medicine. It seems. No. Excited to move on to um, clinical school. What are the hospitals based like? I know at Cambridge, you have the main site, Adam Brooks. But where else do you go? Yeah. So I, I don't want to like I don't want to misadvertise the Cambridge University in case I get any of these wrong. So sort of things like uh, I think Ipswich, St Albans, mm. um, Peterborough. Sure. So I'm um, sort of like, um, but it's all quite I think within about half an hour to an hour and a half away by a car ride. So mm. within East Anglia, it will be rotated out to. Fantastic. Yeah. So this is a common thing I think for different. What, what's the yeah. You said rotate out. So yeah. what is the rotation? <laughs> um. So the year is all split up into uh, blocks so usually you spend i think the blocks are about six weeks i want to say mm. um so you spend sort of six weeks in adambrook space somewhere and then you spend six weeks out in one of these sort of hub hospitals mm. um and then you know you'll be either working within the hospital or you'll be working in a gp practice that's close to the hospital mm -hmm, setting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so that not only do you get sort of an experience of a big tertiary center like adambrook's you also get experience of like district general hospitals which sort of like smaller hospitals that like most people will be going to so mm. My hospital up in Lancaster, for example, the district, district general. And if you need to be, you'll be referred to a big tertiary centre like Adam Brooks. Yeah. Ah, that's really cool. Um, so, 
my question is actually, so you're saying you're going to be moving from university to some place an hour away from Cambridge at the most, or maybe even more. Where do you stay? I mean, do Cambridge provide you accommodation, or...? So I think we're quite lucky in that uh, we have accommodation college mm. um, that we pay for throughout the year, and then when we go out on placements, they will pay for us. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they'll provide other hospital accommodation, or mm. if there's no hospital accommodation, they'll pay, like, they'll put us up in some kind of place. I think for GP practices, it tends to be, like, B and, sort of like B&Bs and um, sort of um, hostels and stuff. So nothing fancy, but gets the job done. That's really nice, and so I guess you can... Forget about sort of accommodation. All you're going there is to go and see what is the medical treatment like there. What can I learn from those environments and those hospitals? Yeah, the, the sort of the funding setup sort of rolls on from sort of preclinical medicine, and mm. so you're still within the college setup as it were. That's really nice. May I ask you though, um, in terms of the way you learn, at the moment we get to lectures, or we have been going to lectures. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we try to yeah, <laughs> try as many as possible. Then we come back home, we revise, we do projects, we submit work, write essays, do exams. How is the learning at clinical school different, and are you looking forward to it? Oh, so I think the learning clinical school, there's like a few lectures, but a lot of it is spending a lot of time on the wards. Mm. Um, and so it, uh, from what I've heard, like it's a lot more self-directed than it is in, clini- in pre-clinical school, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is like, also like, it's obviously a big stress because you don't, because the curriculum's a lot more fluid, you know, you have to go out and make sure you sign up all the competencies, you know about the course. Mm. But also, it's, I think it's also quite good if you're proactive and you can then go out and say, okay, you know, I've done a little bit on this rotation board, but I want to go back in. I want to do some more. I want to go see more patients. And so, you know, it will expand to fill the time you want to give to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... Okay, so you're saying, for example, let's say you do the things you need to do for the day in, in the ward. You can go back and spend more time with patients. Yeah. What is the benefit? <laughs> oh, uh, so presumably, like, the more time you spend with patients, you know, you, this kind of, you know, ability to take histories, the ability to communicate with patients only improves the more people you see. Some patients, for example, have specific conditions or mm. specific um, specific sort of challenges, and like you only will get to see them every once in a while, sure. which is why you have to have like, a lot of exposure, a lot of clinical contact before you can then say, you know, I've really seen everything, I'm now prepared for a lot of different situations. And I guess also into that comes the perspective of self-motivation. Mm-hmm. If you want to be the best possible doctor that you, know, you can be, then simply the more time use that they've given you in a hospital is going to make you a better doctor yeah and you can't cut corners and building skills like that as important as those for a doctor yeah. and one of the good things about well so i think a double-edged sword actually when it comes to the clinical schools that our term times are much shorter so you know i'm coming back in september so i'm hopefully we'll be coming back in october mm. we have about two weeks off for christmas two weeks off for christmas two weeks off for christmas i, I think we break up like like a day or two before Christmas. See. So shuffle uh, home, enjoy exactly. Christmas, and shuffle back. Great, great thing to not be Christian, I guess, and to be, and be, like, <laughs> <laughs> to be like us. The thing uh, is that at Christmas we still celebrate with the family. Yeah, around. absolutely, absolutely. So it's good though, because then we miss all the, the other visits to the aunties and uncles. <laughs> <laughs> we saw Aunt Diwali, I think, which is a bit sad. Oh, uh, that's true. Um, but so. So obviously that means like you're in Cambridge for a lot longer, mm. and uh, you know you sort of around you like oh god what am I gonna how, how am I possibly gonna handle all of this time because like eight weeks here is already like very <laughs> intense and very long, but it means that because you're spending more time here you can afford you know to do the same amount of work the same large amount of work mm. but spend less time of the day, mm. and you know you can spend you know more time with you know with your friends or you know. Uh, or if you don't have any friends like me, you can spend time doing revision. Don't say that. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you can spend that time, you know, doing what you want with the day. And because it's over such a long time period, you have like a lot more flexibility, a lot more time to play with. And I'm really excited for is that you get to be really proactive and you really get to go out there and you know do a lot of work by yourself. Um, mm. And in a way, like you know, anyone who goes to university will like have the experience of going from A levels to university. Sort of the syllabus disappears. You know, you're much more adrift. Um, but that's like building up your ability to sort of work independently and self-motivate and then when you get to clinical school that's just like another step up in that kind of thing. If you'd have three expectations for clinical school, oh goodness. what would they be? Are you going to replay this to me in like three years time? <laughs> and like, oh god, this is completely different. Oh no, the worst thing is I'm going to like say this and then like um, people in the year below will come and see this uh, and they'll be like, oh Adam, this is terrible, this is nothing like what you said. Yeah. Um, in terms of expectations, um, gosh, I, I don't I could say. Um, one thing I really expect is like um, like a lot more freedom, like mm. a lot more freedom to go do your own thing, to mm. go see patients by yourself. Um, I'm really excited in getting to do get you know clinically competent, you know, being able to do things like you know blood gases, to do things like you know um, inserting cannulas, inserting catheters, you know, developing the kind of clinical skills like you know as a third year student like right now, like I'm looking at people who are like from fourth and fifth year, and I'm like I have no idea how you managed to make that jump. Yeah, well, like, how even how even like you take a blood test, all the small intricate steps. 
It's like, how do they learn that? Exactly. Whereas, you know, I, yeah, I have friends, you know, back in like other universities, like back in Lancaster and stuff, and, like, and they've already developed these kinds of skills. In the first skills. year? They've... In the first year, yeah. So uh, up in Lancaster, yeah, they're doing like, on the first year, they're already going out on wars. So that's an entirely different way of sort of structuring your course, you know, mm-hmm. getting young people out on the wars as quickly as possible. Um, but it really shows that like, you know, these kinds of skills can be built up quite quickly, mm. as long as you're willing to put in like, the time and the effort and motivation to go do them. So that's mm-hmm. going to be very exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to like going and doing what I wanted to do, which is becoming a doctor and doing clinical medicine, which is what right. I came here to do. Yeah. It's been delayed for three years. We're finally here. I wouldn't say delayed, though. I'd say it's more, it's it's been structured in a way where oh, you were yeah, set up enough, to be yeah. in a very good position at the end of six years. And you can do research at clinical school as well? Or... Yes, no, absolutely. Oh, so wow. Okay. Soon selected components, which is sort of like a six-week research oh, block. Yes, I see. I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah within yeah. it, um, where people sort of do things like audits or research. Um, there's your electives, which you can then go, you know, you can do like traditional elective stuff. Or oh, you can do my electives are going to be awesome. <laughs> Quickly, what are electives? Oh, so electives are, so you have, I think, about seven weeks off where you can you can go abroad. And I think it's at the end of fifth year, mm. so the fifth, sixth year summer holidays, which are about two, three weeks long. Um, you get to have about, I want to say, seven weeks off um, where you can go, you know, sort of uh, abroad and you can do some kind of work in some kind of um, other medical setting. Mm. So a lot of people go to sort of like low resource countries, you know, to try and explain, you know, how do you do clinical skills in these low resource settings? How do you still get the best medical care when you've got hard equipment? Exactly, you know, and how can you go and help out in like community that are unserved compared to obviously the UK where, you know, we have a lot of facilities available to us. Um, other people go and do sort of research. So a lot of people go, you know, to the States or go to Canada or go to Europe to do sort of research placements there or to just do medicine in a different country. Um, I think some people even, like, you know, stay, you know, within the UK, but, you know, go up to, say, Scotland and work in the Highlands, you know, go, you know, really try and go outside your comfort zone to work in medical situations to improve your clinical and research skills. I've heard South Africa is actually really good because of the trauma victims. It's not a good thing, but, like, yeah. from a medical perspective, it's yeah. useful. Um, Australia is going to be amazing for the, sort of the comfort and the yeah. climate. USA, again, it's the USA, it'll be very yeah. fun. South America, though, I've heard that's going to be quite good as well. Oh, really? Because I guess in the mountains, especially, they have oh. the altitude issue. Plus also the lack of resources because yeah. you don't, because you get fewer. Yeah. And it's very it's remote, it's interesting. Like, yeah. Well, that's another thing to look forward yeah. to then too. Just to conclude this video, it's a big change you're coming to. Moving from comfort zone of lectures and traditional learning as we're used to, to more of a hands-on, proactive, running around uh, way of learning. Mm-hmm. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I'm very nervous, but also very excited. And I guess, um, you know, if you ever get sort of anxious, then all you need to do is look at the people in the year above and say, like, okay, they've got through it. And the year before them, those guys got through it. And if they can get through it, then, like, I should be able to get through it. Indeed. And anyone watching at home should be able to get through it, too, if you come here. Well, hopefully that was a very useful insight for the, for the audience as to sort of the real-life perspective of what it's like to actually leave the typical Cambridge degree and move on yeah. to the actual medical part of the medical degree here at Cambridge. Check in with me in three years' time to see what <laughs> We'll do an expectations and reality <laughs> video. <laughs> it is all three years' time. I look like some gaunt, or even more gaunt and haggard. You'll be a doctor, yeah. but you'll I'll be, be a doctor, that's true. I will be a doctor. Uh, I'll be going, oh my goodness, it's completely different to what I expected it to be. But Anyway, right. Thank you so much, Anime, for being here. Guys, if you have any questions, of course, make sure to comment down below. I'm sure Anime will love to answer them. Thank you so much, Anime. Thank you so much for coming on the channel. It's been lovely having you, and hopefully we'll see you all soon in the next Thanks video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Woo. High five.